came in, I saw David Davis here, but he sort of disappeared. But I, I, I suspect his presence here was to guarantee I said the right thing. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm just sorry that David's gone. I should also add how pleasant it is to be here, and it was a rather interesting wimble I had to get here, including a glass of wine from the Adam Smith Institute when I sorted out where I had to be. So, <laughs> it's been a, a, a good evening. Now, what I wanted to say was this, I don't want to repeat all that you've just had trotted out about the statistics. Uh, it's perfectly obvious that there is a serious problem. And what I said earlier about the Englishman's home no longer being his castle is true uh, in a multitude of cases. And what's happened, and I think it's important to understand this, is that we have had an incremental growth of these powers of entry. Each one justified by the individual circumstances and without any thought to the wider consequences of it. So to take as an example the one that was given about hedges... You will recall that there was a great deal of widespread concern about people putting up hedges which were intrusive on their neighbours' properties because they darkened the garden. And somebody has concluded, perhaps not entirely unreasonably, that there ought to be a power of inspectors to go and have a look at these hedges if the local authority is going to take action. And then somebody else has thought, well, there might be a problem because some of these hedges might only be accessible by going through somebody's house. And I think you can see the inexorable logic which has then led to a power of entry into a property being given for something which appears to be largely unrelated to what goes on indoors. And we do have, I think, to bear that in mind when making an assessment of this plethora of powers of entry. The truth is we don't know exactly how many there are. We have both Harry, who's made his points, we have the point about Big Brother Watch. Uh, I, my, my view is that Big Brother Watch are probably right. I think Harry's been very conservative and careful in his approach to this, wishing to already show the magnitude of it, uh, my feeling is that a trawl will probably show that there are far uh, more. And on a calculation, there appear to be 47 officers in each local authority who have a power of going on to somebody's uh, property. So the question really that you will be wanting to hear from me is not a sort of uh, survey of what the problem is, but what is it that we can do about it? If you will forgive me if I just take you back a moment to a paper we uh, published in the autumn, which is part of Conservative Party policy, not, not directly on point on this, but linked to it, which was about reversing the rise of the surveillance state. And in particular in that, we made absolutely clear that we were intending to curtail some of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act powers that enabled directed surveillance to be made uh, against individuals. The example which I think we cited there was dog fouling in public parks, uh, where you can have directed surveillance of individuals by council officers on the uh, say-so of a senior council officer. Uh, I was fascinated, actually, when I queried this. I, I received a, a long letter from a person in authority who said, but you don't realise the dangers of toxicoplasmosis, which may be true, but nobody has yet persuaded me that any amount of directed surveillance is going to make one beam of a difference to the number of dogs that in fact are going to go into public parks and foul them, unless you have proper enforcement mechanisms on a much wider scale. So, with that in mind, as a principle, I turn to the issue of powers of entry. And what I am minded to do and can, I think, say with some confidence that we are going to do, is the following. Firstly, we've already committed ourselves to abolishing the power of council tax inspectors to enter properties, uh, domestic property, to carry out uh, assessments. And we have also said that bin inspectors in local authorities will similarly be curtailed from entering premises. Beyond that... My view is that the central thing that we need to do is to require a warrant for all entries into domestic premises. I'm absolutely convinced that that will be the single biggest check on the powers of inspectors going in, because it will require them to think twice before making the application, and at the same time as requiring the magistrate's warrant for all powers of entry, what we would wish to do would be to publish guidance for the courts 
to point out that they should only be granted on the grounds of there being a suspicion of the commission of a serious criminal offence, that is one punishable by imprisonment, or secondly, on the grounds of public safety. And I think that if we do that as an issue of principle, then uh, it, the, in those circumstances uh, we would be able to provide considerable protection. There may also be some scope for having a provision that beyond that you might still be able to require have a power of entry, but that you'd have to get it, give it on notice with an opportunity for the householder to argue against it if it didn't fall into those categories, but you could still argue that there was a, a reason for going in in order to investigate uh, uh, some other form of offence. Um, in addition to that, I intend to carry out a review of the actual powers that exist. Now, it's difficult because of the plethora of powers we're talking about and because of the example which I gave you uh, in relation to hedges, to start having blanket policy. It seems to me that we need to look at each one, and as we look at each one, I suspect that we will find that quite a few of these are not, in fact, necessary at all. In which case, uh, it is my hope and intention to have a repeal act in the first year of a Conservative government. Uh, I've been arguing for it for some time, and I am quietly confident that I will be able to get it. It's going to cover a wide range of things, and I intend to ensure uh, that some of these are included within it. And I hope very much that prior to the general election, which I know is imminent, we will be able to say a little more detail on paper, as opposed to what I'm saying to you uh, verbally this evening, about uh, how we intend to go about dealing with this particular problem. I'm sorry, in a way, that I haven't been able to be perhaps a little more specific this evening than I would like to be. So I hope that covers the main points that we need to discuss this evening. As I say, I think we have to recognise that simply jumping up and down and saying this is all terrible does run the risk that eventually we will notice that one or two of these powers of entry may have some semblance of justification. Uh, we live in a complex society and we also appear to believe that we should be regulated. Whether the regulation actually does us much good is another matter. But what I am convinced about is that if we allow bureaucrats to run riot, they will run riot. It's as simple as that, and the proper way of curbing that is by introducing sensible checks which require judicial safeguards. It tends to work well, and if we do that, and also provide, as I say, as a system of making an application on notice in cases which are not serious crime or serious public health, then I think we will probably get the balance just about right.